Hey everyone, just quick announcement before I share today's episode with Corinne Sutton. Corinne is doing amazing work and I'm excited to share his story. But just want to take a minute to share the release of my first children's book of my healthy children's book series called Maddox's Trip to the Chiropractor. It's a cute book with bright pictures that follows a toddler on her trip to the chiropractor. It shows her excitement and how she knows that it impacts her health in a positive way. And each purchase of the book will be supporting a project that I started called the Unlock Wellness Project. For each purchase of the book, we will be donating a wellness bag to a child in need. These wellness bags will include non-toxic, chemical-free essentials such as soap, shampoo, toothpaste, a toothbrush, items that a lot of the times children in tough situations don't have access to. We're also going to be shipping wellness bags to flood victims in Houston, Texas, and reaching out to victims of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria as well. You can learn more about the book and about the Unlock Wellness Project by going to drcaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y johnson.com. Click on the shop tab, and then click the children's book option. You'll be able to read a short description and even watch a short video to learn more. You can also purchase the book directly on Amazon.com by searching Maddox's Trip to the Chiropractor. But I hope you guys love the book. Be sure to check out my website to learn more. And thank you so much for the support. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Corinne Sutton. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Corinne Sutton. Corinne is a plant-based bodybuilder and is just doing some incredible work. I'm excited for him to get to share his story and just hear everything that he's up to. So Corinne, thank you so much for coming on. I'm, I'm really excited to have you. Hey, what's up? Yes, I'm, I'm very excited myself. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Yeah, no problem. And, and we were talking for a second before we started recording and uh, I, I was telling Corinne that whenever I first was looking into going plant-based, like his Instagram account was one of the first ones I started following. So it's, it, it's pretty cool to, to have him on here. So, so thank you for all that you do. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Corinne, why don't you just jump in with your backstory? So where you're from and then just your wellness journey as a young kid and how you really evolved to, to you know, where you are right now. Well, I mean, I'm from Miami, Florida. Um, I was born in the Bronx, Bronx, New York. And uh, make a long story short, um, with me, what happened is uh, I was always, always interested in health. I was always a fitness enthusiast uh, since I was a kid, all until now as an adult. Um, I, I was always into uh, physical, some type of physical activity, if it was sports or, you know, just exercising regularly, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but fast forward from there, I did serve into, I did serve in the military for about eight years. I did four years fully active in the United States Marine Corps and also deployed in Operation Iraqi Freedom, Freedom 3 and 4. And then from there, I went into the United States Navy Reserves and did that actively for another four years as a military instructor. That's cool. So, yeah. What was your what yeah. was your your main re just curious like your main reasoning for for wanting to do the military was it because of the, the physical aspect of it and like you were really into that or um, do you know what I mean like what what was your main drive to yeah. to want to go that route? I had multiple reasons. I mean, I did have family. Uh, my father and my grandfather did serve the army and the navy, mm -hmm. and also you know with the things with the war and stuff like that. I got I, you could say I got caught up with like the propaganda and everything or whatever you want to call it but i got caught up in that and i just wanted to do something different too um you know a lot of my friends were going to college and i just didn't want to go you know i didn't want to go to college i didn't want to follow the same footsteps or the same path that all my friends were doing i really wanted to explore my own journey so the military kind of called out to me and also when i was in high school i did do the navy junior rotc program that they had. So that also had a, a big influence on me. So I thought that it would be um, something cool to do, you know, something different, something highly respected. And when I went in, um, it was cool. You know, I had, I had a lot of fun. I mean, war, war obviously wasn't fun, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, 
you know, I did learn a lot. It did bring me to a different perspective of how I look upon the world and things like that, especially coming back from war. I look at the world a lot differently now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's still, you could say, because it still influences me from today, how I look at politics and just how people are, you know? Right. So, Was it hard for you to kind of like come back and like view the world as a, I guess, a normal person? I mean, you, I guess you really can't once you've seen those type of things, right? Because you always hear those stories yeah. of people come back and it's like, you don't really get it. You know, you know, you haven't experienced it firsthand. Well, I mean, when I came back from war, um, that you could say that was the hardest part was re- just readjusting just back to the just back to normal to a normal environment to the United States civilization. It was really hard. Um, I stayed away from my family for about a whole year uh, after I came back just because I couldn't readjust. And also I was trying to go back into war because I felt more comfortable there. So you know, it was like that, that's the type of things that I was uh, handling uh, during that time. But once I got out, um, you could say what that's when you could say, like, I was more influenced in doing something better with my life, because that's the vegan when I talk to you about the vegan story. Um, that's played a, 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 a huge part of my journey. Yeah. So, so you came back and then like, what were the next steps for you then? I mean, were you, once you readjusted, were you like, I miss like the physicality of it. So I'm going to start really just upping the workouts or like what really led you to be more health driven, I guess. So, so what happened to me was once I transferred over to the United States Navy reserves, uh, the reserves is part time. So it's like you're part time military, you're not full time. So at the time I had my own business selling toys, uh, at the mall. And while I was doing that, I was also going to uh, school full time and also doing the reserves. Now, it all started with me. This is like the vegan story with me and why I went vegan and now I'm a bodybuilder and things like that. So what happened with me was while I was in school, I saw Gary Yorofsky, uh speech live. Like he actually came to my school and did like the greatest speech ever. You ever heard that speech before? I haven't. I I just wrote it down because I haven't I haven't heard it. So um no, I'm interested though. I'll check it out whenever we're done. Yeah, it's called The Greatest Speech Ever. And it's I highly recommend everyone that's listening to watch that video. Even if you're vegan, you know, you should still watch it because there's a lot of information that he does give out and it's very informative. So when he taught when he did his speech, I it just blew my mind how he talked about animals. He talked about the medical reasons, health reasons, like everything, like all the benefits behind to uh, eating plants and not eating animals. So, and I never really looked at it that way. When he explained everything about uh, the animal agriculture and things like that, I never saw that way. You know, Mm -hmm. you could say I was the guy who just thought animals were meant to eat. And I didn't, I never really thought about the exploitation and the way he explained it, you know, right. and what yep. kind of resonated with me was um, just how everything was situated. Uh, it kind of, You could say like how the animal agriculture does things, especially with the animals uh, being trapped in cages, killing them, slaughtering them. With me, it re- what resonated with me was when you learn about military history, when you're in the military, you learn about military history, you learn about concentration camps, you learn about like all the bad things that happened in war, not just the good stuff. You also learn about the bad things. And it had a similarity. The only difference was it was we were doing it doing the same practices to animals, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's what that's what I saw. That was the relationship that I saw went throughout that speech, you know. When he talked about slavery, things like that, I'm like, man, you know, we do the same things to right. the animals. Yeah, I mean, you've you've seen that firsthand. Yeah, like even when we have prisoners of war, how we treat them, and things like that. I mean, it it was a similar practice. It was very similar, like how you set up the farms, how you set each each animal segregated, like all these things, like a lot of things really were similar. And at the end of everything is always death. You know, a lot of blood, a lot of death. So I didn't see why um, I had to live that type of way. So, and I, I, I joined the military because I wanted to be a hero. And since I got out, I'm like, yo, I want to continue to stand up for, for that reason, you know? 
I right. wanted to make a difference in the world. So, you know, what happened with me was once I went vegan, I, I actually quit the Navy. Like I had a six year contract with the Navy and I got out early. I got out uh, after four years. Is that a hard process? Um, well, they, you could say they made it hard. Right. So like, <laughs> I'm like sure. They made it, yeah. They, they made it extremely hard because, uh, with me, I have an honorable discharge with the, with the Marine Corps and that because I finished my contract and mm-hmm. that's something that they can never take back. But when it came with the Navy and I was trying to do the right things to get out, uh, they actually gave me a, a admin administrative separation. And it's, it's really nothing. It's just saying like, you know, uh, he was on, on, um, he wasn't able to fulfill his duties. So it's nothing doesn't make no crazy impact on your record. Nothing like right. that. You know, it's like you never existed pretty much, you know? So, right. so, um, they made it that difficult for me. So, but the main reason was just because I didn't want to be involved with it anymore. You know, you could say I wanted to rack my rifle, you know, I just didn't want to, uh, be involved with the war anymore. I didn't want to be involved with killing anything. It didn't matter if it was a human being or an animal. I just didn't want to do it, you know, and I just didn't see anything, uh, any positive impact from doing that, you know? Right. So yeah, you just like, kind of, you had reached your, your limit almost. And I mean, did you have this making that decision where like, did you have any like backlash from other people that you worked with or like friends and family or were they all pretty understanding because you were able to no, kind of no, articulate you know, where like, you were at? You could say, you could say a lot, of, a lot of my military friends didn't, they, they tell the truth. They didn't know what was going on. You know, a lot of my friends didn't really know what was going on because I had a mental breakdown. I, I mean, it was pretty bad. You know, <laughs> so but I just couldn't do it anymore. And I was playing this persona of, of a person I didn't want to be anymore. I wanted to do something else to make a more positive impact, something more, more of a peaceful approach, not so aggressive and violent, right. you know? Right. And I mean, it, that, I mean, that benefits them as well, because I mean, they, I mean, they want somebody there that their heart is fully in. And if yours is somewhere else, I mean, that benefits both parties, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you get in, in, especially within your soul, you get these feelings, you, know, you get, it's, it's conflicting, you know, mm-hmm. it's very conflicting. So you know, I, that's when I got out and I just told him like, you, you know, I can't do it anymore. I just can't, you know, like after eight years, it finally hit me. Yeah. And that's when I went vegan. I started pursuing more of a plant-based diet. Uh, I started becoming more religious. You know, I started going to uh, Buddhism, uh, started doing a lot of meditation, a lot of different things. Um, and then from there, after a year of being vegan, I wanted, that's when I decided, what can I do to really make a difference? You know, because I wasn't the type of guy who really goes out and protests. I mean, you can look at my profile. I, I really never protested before. You know, I'm not that type of guy and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not for me uh, because I want to do something that's really going to make a personal impact. So that's when I started going to uh, physical training and started becoming a health coach. I could teach people about nutrition and change, because nutrition plays such a huge role in everyone's lives. And then I went into uh, bodybuilding because I just looked at that. I was like, well, I like to lift weights. I like to exercise. And this looks like a pretty cool sport because a lot of people think that you have to use drugs and you have to consume animals to just get protein and build a lot of muscle. So I thought that it would be a great sport to enter because pretty much I'll be considered the underdog. But as long as I can prove everyone wrong, you know, and do it all through plants and do it naturally, uh, it'll make people wake up and be inspired through that. Like, yo, look, there's a guy who's actually doing it. There's a guy, that's someone that I want to follow. That's someone that, you know, if he's doing it, it's very possible. Like everything that, it it defies everything that we were taught when we were born, you know? So that's, that's part of it. And I just continue to do it from now, you know? That's cool. And, and like, I, I know, like, I love that you do it the right way. And um, do, do you ever get, and I'm sure you do, because I mean, you have a pretty big following on social media, but like, people that doubt that you're doing it the right way, because I see that a lot in like the plant based, like, like lifters and like, just people just just talking like, <laughs> just just like saying that they're yeah. doing other stuff. And I'm sure you hear it all the time. Uh, I don't I don't get 
I don't get it a lot, really. I mean, you do have a few people who who will say stuff, yeah, you know, but I don't get it. I really don't get it that much. And usually, when I do get it, uh, I always respond back to the person. I'm not the guy who just ignore it and things like that. I'll, I'll send them a message directly and just tell them, like, you know, if you you might think that I'm doing stuff, I'm doing it the wrong way, things like that. But if you want to work with me, <laughs> I can show you. <laughs> How to do it the right way, you know? Because That's awesome. I'm, I'm not a guy who I'm not going to defend anything. I'm not going to defend myself because I already know I'm not. So, right. but if you want to learn, if you want to achieve, just work with me. Work with me for a couple of weeks, and I'll and I can show you how to do it the right way. You know, that's and awesome. that's it. Yeah, yeah. Not, just coming coming from a place of of love is the best way to handle any issue like that for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's why that's why I like doing the vlogs and, and things like that too, because you know, people can really see the competition I'm going against. I mean, I'm going against people who's who's also a lot bigger than me, you know. That's not and, and there's certain competitions that I do enter that uh you you can kind of tell that they're using, you know. Right. But that's part of the that's part of it. And I don't care if they're using or not, yeah, you know, because my, my mission statement is something different, you know, than that other athlete, you know. So I don't, I don't, I don't really uh, have any problems with people who's using, you know, really, I don't, uh, that's their prerogative. They decide to do it. But with me personally, I have a different message and that's what I'm more focused on is just myself and the message that I'm trying to push out. That's, that's awesome. It. No, I love it. Mm-hmm. And whenever you first started, like, you know, you listened to um, that talk that Gary did and then you started to really decide that that was the path you wanted to go on like what were your first steps like what were your biggest like struggles or what was the easiest thing just making that transition into like a like a vegan lifestyle you could say it's like any any person any new vegan uh the the notorious question is like where's the protein you know (laughs) (laughs) i never never heard that one corn (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah that that was the first question i asked gary rossi after his speech i was like I loved everything and mm-hmm. I was really want to do this, but where do you get the protein? Like, I know you showed me some examples, but you know, how can I really apply it? Because back then I didn't know anything about nutrition. I really didn't know anything about true physical activity, you know, and uh, by exercising and exercise science and physiology. So I was, I just asked them. So he just sent me to a website. Uh, I started from there and then you could say I just did my own research from there and I changed my major too. So with me, I, I started looking at uh, Robert Sheik's form, like vegan bodybuilding and fitness. I looked at that, started picking out a few athletes. I bought his book, actually, uh, Robert Sheik's books. Uh, I think it's called Vegan Bodybuilding and Fitness too. I think the book is called that too. But um, I started reading his book. I started uh, following Tori Washington because that was the first uh, bodybuilder that I saw uh, when I went vegan. And I was like, man, if he can do it, like anyone <laughs> can do it. Then. I know, he's and a boss. Like, anyone, yeah, yeah, anyone could do it. So um, when I saw him, you know, I just reached out to him, you know, he, uh, and I started following him, seeing some of the things he did. But then the major thing that really helped me the most was uh, when I was in school because I was in school going for uh, criminal ju- uh, criminal justice, but then I switched my switched my major into uh, exercise science and physiology, and I started just taking for my electives. I started taking tons of nutrition classes, and uh, I actually got uh, certified in uh, fitness nutrition too. So uh, from there, I just learned more, and even the classes I was taking. They were they were showing um I think Cowspiracy at the time. I don't think it was Cowspiracy, it was Food Matters, yeah. I think it's, it, I think it's called Food Matters. Yeah, Food Matters at that time. Yeah. They were showing that one and and a couple doc other vegan documentaries and I was surprised that they were teaching this. Well, I'm a little surprised at that too, because like I'm just thinking of all the like the nutrition classes that I've taken and like total opposite of, of that. Like in school as you know, as far as undergrad and, and all of that. See, for me, I thought it was just some type of crazy spiritual journey because I was like, you know, like I'm all about like following the signs and the universe and all these things. So I was like, oh, I must be on the right path because yeah. 
everything's screaming out vegan. And, you know, so, <laughs> like with me, <laughs> That's awesome. so with me, it was just, it was pretty cool just seeing that. And, you know, even the professors that I was uh, taking for nutrition and exercise, they would, they, they would tell them, tell them everyone, you know, That's cool. The going plant-based is by far the best diet, you know, and this is like five, six years ago, they were telling this in the school. So that's why, like, even now, I'm like, man, like, why, why do I even have nutritionists and dietitians and, and certain health experts saying the complete opposite? Because when I went, they were saying this, you know, they were saying this in the school, but maybe it was just my school they were saying. Maybe that. you just lucked out Not with your other. school. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's cool. What, what yeah. school was that? It was uh, Broward Co- College and uh, International, International Sports Science Association. So it was those two schools. Where is, it, were, is that, is that in Miami or was that? Yeah. This okay. Broward College is in Miami and then International, International Sports Science Association is located in California. Okay, cool. Was that one online or were you like yeah. going back and forth? I, I did both. I did okay. two in Rome. So like, yeah, I started in Broward College and then um, pretty much you could say near the end when I was just about to graduate, I took all my credits and do it all online just because it, I already knew what I wanted to do with the training and stuff like that. So I threw it to them and they're highly accreditable because uh, they're rated like top 10 in military schools, mm-hmm. you know? And so I just went ahead and did that so I can get a degree through them and also get um, certified as a master trainer. So that, that's why I did that switch at the last minute. I mean, it took me a, another year, but I thought it would be well worth it. Yeah, no, that that's cool. That's cool. So you got all the you got all the schooling done, and now you're like out in the field. So like, I mean, you, you're located in Miami. So right now you're just are, are you doing mainly online? Are you doing online training? Or are you like one on one with people doing classes? Or like, what's your setup look like right now? So now I do uh, I do private one on one and online training. So I do both a combination of both. Uh, with the one on one training, is uh, it's pretty cool because with that, I'm able to sit with that with that member and be able to really change them now what i do with them is i i usually go through them i usually take them through a whole transition i don't force veganism on anyone or being on a plant-based site on anyone but i do restrict certain food products if they're working with me and i always uh put that right on the table at first i tell them they can't do uh beef dairy shellfish and pork so i take those items out because I want the that client to really experience just taking out those food products itself make them feel the change, you right. know. Yep. And and then when they see that, you know, then more than likely nine out of ten that everyone that works with me, you know, they either go they either go vegetarian or vegan. You know, they don't just lower their food meat consumption. They either go vegetarian or vegan through this transition. You know, so just because they, they watch me, they see me, I'm always, I'm always going to work wearing some type of vegan shirt, you know, so <laughs> right. it's just, just leading by example. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and, and they feel it themselves because when I write the meal plans and things like that for them, um, they, they learn, they learn a lot more. I throw in the, uh, the uh, vegan and vegetarian options for whatever, uh, animal product I do take out, I replace it. Mm-hmm. And I also offer like a, like a shopping tour. So I take my clients on a tour through the, through the store and I teach them every single food product that's in there. You know, it's like a whole class that I do. That's cool. And that's it. And, and it's, you could say it's the same principle with online, except, you know, I can't do the live things, obviously, but I, I do as much as I can over the, over uh, online or over the phone and things like that. That's cool. And, 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 you know, you're lucky you have a really large, like vegan community in Miami, right? I mean, you have like, I mean, cause there's a, I mean, there's a lot of people there. Like I know that notice that you like kind of collaborate with, with a bunch of people in that area, right? Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's progressively growing and one, I, I do collaborate with some of the restaurants in the area, especially the new vegan now they're not in miami they're located more delray in delray beach which is more north but um i collaborate with the restaurants because i i looked at it this way i looked at it that you know 
eighty percent of everything plays in plays when it comes to health is food. You know, right. yeah. so definitely try and collaborate. Um, my work with the restaurant, you know, they're going to help me and I help them. You know, and right. I also with the new vegan. I also do like cooking classes and then I teach them like, you know, a little bit about physical fitness and things like that. But I tell them the importance of how, how food plays. And then when people see that coming from a trainer, because I, I'll sit here right now and tell you, there's a lot of trainers who doesn't know anything about nutrition. They go off of right. their own <laughs> opinions. Right. <They're>, <laughs> no, sad. I believe it. <laughs> they, go through their own, they go through their own opinions and their own thoughts of what, what they should, what people should eat. And the thing is, the truth is like you really ha when they see people, people like myself doing doing something different, like actually showing people how to cook and telling them the importance of the food, you know, especially like doing things like non GMO organic, you know, you want to do more things, more plant based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and you're just up there teaching these people. I mean, they feel they, they feel more receptive. You right. could say. Yeah. No, that's amazing. No, I love that. And so, um, so what do you have going on in the future? Just continue continuing to put out just really great content, or do you have anything about to come up that you want to share with everybody? Well, right now I'm, I'm working on a, a brand called Vegan Lip Fit. So, Vegan Lip Fit is uh, the reason I call it Vegan Lip Fit because it holds the three principles that I think that is very important for a per someone who wants to be like a better person. You know, they want to be a better version of themselves. So, vegan is about like the the vegan is the ethics of being vegan because mm -hmm. a lot of people would say now, like, I want to go more plant-based and people who goes more plant-based, I feel that they're going to fall off the wagon, just like any other diet that's been invented, you know? Right. So I want to teach people why the real reasons why of going plant-based, why to go vegan because the ethics and the compassion of other animals, you know, you have to put it into your heart first, right? You know, you have to really, really put into your heart space. So it's something it means something to you. It's not just a, a personal accomplishment or, or just a, another bad diet. It actually means something when it comes to animals and the environment. Right. Correct. I love that you said that because it is like, because I, I, I mean, I feel like it was probably the same thing for you too. It's like somebody may decide to go, you know, vegan, plant-based for a certain reason, but then you learn about the other positive reasons and then like they all combine to make it to where it's kind of impossible to go back because I mean, like, you know, if I went in for the nutrition aspect, but then you learn about the animal treatment, you know, you watch these documentaries, you learn about the animal treatment, you learn about um, the yeah. effects on the, um, just on the environment, like all of those things add up mm -hmm. once you start learning about them and everybody has their own reason. But, um, but, but yeah. once you learn about one, you learn about the rest and it's just like, it's kind of game over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And, and then uh, live is a uh, lifestyle, you know, because uh, when you go vegan, it changes your lifestyle. It changes how you live. You know, it definitely changes how you live because it plays a, it plays a huge part. If, if you're a religious person, it plays a food does play a huge part in, into your religious beliefs. It plays a huge part when it comes to family gatherings. It comes to a huge part when it comes to hanging out with friends. You know, a lot of people don't understand how by changing just the food that you eat, it changes. Sometimes it changes who you hang out with. Right. You know, it changes who you're social with. You know, so I teach the lifestyle. And this is why I do the vlogs and things like that, because I want people, a lot of people, you could say they get social anxiety. And this is why some people go back to eating meat. You know, maybe it's a spouse, you know, maybe it's friends, maybe it's family. So I try to show people how you can still be vegan or still be plant-based and be able to still enjoy, you know, hanging out with your friends, hang out with your family and, and the de decreasing the conflict that most vegans who go through, you know, cause I know a lot of vegans, they come to me and they're like, man, you know, my boyfriend's not vegan. He's, we're having arguments now, or my family doesn't like it. We're going through a lot of arguments. So I show them ways, and this is why I do the vlogs and things like that, show them ways like, look, try these restaurants, try these recipes. Yeah, and I really encourage like the mock meats because nine out of 10, if you don't even say anything about vegan, you just make the food. People don't care about if it's plant-based. People don't care if it's vegan. <laughs> right. When it comes to food, if it tastes good, mm -hmm. no one's going to no one's going to say anything. Exactly. So this is why I really promote the lifestyle part. 
And then the fitness is because, you know, just because you're dieting, just because you're vegan, you know, the, the fitness plays a huge aspect too, just because if you're going to, a lot of people who wants to promote veganism, I highly recommend, you know, be in shape because the thing is, is that if you're, you could be vegan and eat Oreos and still look like crap, you know, (laughs) and, and, and then when you're trying to influence other people about your ethics, you're not going to really play a big impact on that person because first of all, veganism already has a lot of negative things about it already. So the last thing you want is also be unhealthy too. And then trying to promote animal uh, cruelty. Right. It's the same, it's the same concept of being like an unhealthy, like if, like if you were a personal trainer and you were like 300 pounds, it's like you, you lose credibility and you can't really get your message out there like you'd want to. Exactly. You know, and, and, you know, and this is like some of the things that I learned from the military too. It's like, you know, you have to, you have to be, you have to lead by example, you know, right. like no one's not like in the military, especially in the Marine Corps, no one respects you. If you like the, when it comes to physical fitness, no one, no one cares how smart you are. If you're, if you're out of shape, right. You know, that people think that they could outdo you in anything anyways, because especially if you're in a combat unit, which I was, it's like, dude, I could do everything you want me to do plus more. So be quiet, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, right. so, you, know uh, you lose credibility. So I mean, that's why I really, really promote the fitness. And I think, you know, building this brand called Being Live Fit and promoting all three principles is going to make people have a, a more balance. I, I don't think it's just one thing. I don't think it's just vegan. I don't think it's just the fitness. I don't think it's just the food or the lifestyle. I think it's a balance of everything. And you have a great, good understanding of all of it, you know, you have a more compassionate way to uh, send, send a message and inspire others. Absolutely. No, I love, I love that. And uh, Corinne, what's the best way for people to follow you on social media? That way they can keep up with your new brand and just keep up with all of the positive work that you're doing. Oh, yeah. Just, um, you can just go on YouTube. Um, it's Vegan Live Fit or just type in my name, Corinne Sutton. Uh, same thing with my Instagram and Facebook. Just type in my my name, Corinne Sutton, or type in Vegan Live Fit, and you'll be connected to either me or my community group. Uh, community group, but it's very simple. I try to make it simple, nothing crazy with like star and one two three and all that crap. So <laughs> like, <laughs> Vegan Live Fit or Corinne Sutton, and that's it. Perfect, perfect. And then Corinne, just closing question that I ask every guest. But if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's something that's helped you along your own personal wellness journey. But if, if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? Um, if, you, if you ever want to go on a plant-based, if you're interested in going vegan, you know, definitely go to the experts. Go to people who's been doing it. Put, go to people who has a, a bigger impact you know, just on, on, on the world and who's, who's, who's been doing it for such a long time. Just because if you go to friends or if just like looking at faulty information, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that's out there that's going to debunk veganism, you know, or debunk a plant-based diet. So if you're really interested and you want to hear the truth and learn how to do things the right way, definitely look for the experts. And I'm one of them. So, you know, if you want, if you want to talk about it, I'm always free to talk. I'm always willing to help. Awesome. No, I love it. That's perfect. And Kern, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I loved having you and I'm excited for people to go check you out and follow the amazing work that you're doing. All right, cool. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Corinne. He's doing such positive work and I'm excited for you guys to follow him on social media to keep up with everything that he's doing. But you can find the social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes But you can also find them on my website as well at drkaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y johnson.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, website, all of that. So all of Corinne's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Corinne, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. And like I spoke about in the intro, also be sure to check out my first children's book of my Healthy Children's Book series called Maddox's Trip to the Chiropractor. 
Each purchase of the book supports the Unlock Wellness Project, which supplies a wellness bag to a child in need for each book purchased. You can learn more about the book and the Unlock Wellness Project on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. Click on the Shop tab, then choose the Children's Book option. You'll be able to read a short description and even watch a short video to learn more. If you do purchase the book, be sure to share it on social media using the hashtag UWProject. I'll repost it and give you a shout out on the podcast. But I hope you guys love the book. Thank you so much for the support. And I hope you love today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in.